The Witcher 3 completely changed the way that I not only play video games, but the way that I interact with them, think about them. Everything about video games has been changed since I played The Witcher 3. Now, I, I'm not a huge, like, video game fanboy. I'm not one of those people that will just get into a, a, a franchise and then no matter, you know, they can do no wrong. No, no, you how dare you insult Halo or Fallout or whatever. I, I covered Fallout on this channel for a good four or five months, even before it was announced uh, to even be in existence. And then when the game came out, I tried to play it. I tried to really enjoy it. I didn't find it that great, and I told you guys that. I made videos saying, honestly, I don't think it's that good. I don't know what they were doing for six or seven years in developing this that led them to making side quests, which is just going and clearing out a bunch of AI ghouls uh, 70 times over. It, it was absurd. And then I go and I sit down and I play The Witcher 3, and every side quest is unbelievably unique. You know, you're walking through the city and uh, somebody is just hollering at you. You can keep walking past them or you can stop and talk to them. And if you stop and talk to them, then all of a sudden it starts this huge side quest which will take up three hours of your time to fully flush out and to solve all the problems and do everything like that. And you could have just kept walking by and never done that quest. It just would have gone under the rug completely nonchalant but that's it's the amazing depth of it all and they don't force it on you they let you experience it how you want to another amazing time I had in The Witcher 3 was uh, to not get super spoilery just because it's such an incredible game I don't want to spoil anything if somehow you haven't played it yet if you haven't you definitely need to but it, there's a point when a woman is uh, basically she's done something really bad she's committed a crime and she's being sentenced and she's sentenced to uh, essentially death by being chained to a rock and starved to, uh, starved to death and, and that's just what happens so you're like oh okay there you go and you just go about your business and you keep playing the game for another 10-15 hours you've completely forgotten that that ever took place and then I, I was sailing in a boat, and all of a sudden I look over, and there's this boulder, and there's something interesting on it. I sail over there. I, I, I don't know what it's called, parking your boat, uh, shoring your boat. I don't know. Anyway, I get out of the boat. <laughs> I get out of the boat, and I walk over to this boulder, and there's like a little plaque whatever thing. And, and guess what? It's the woman. It's the woman. She was chained up there. She starved to death. Crows have eaten all of her flesh away, and it's just like a skeleton strapped to a rock. It was amazing to see that level of, of depth, because again, I could have gone through the entire game never noticing that. If I hadn't been on that boat in that specific place and just happened to look over there, happened to have my brightness settings at the, the setting they were, happened to, to have turned the camera just such a way, be there at that certain time of the day in the game, to just see that, it could have not happened. I could have never seen it. You probably haven't seen that. I mean, it, apparently it's a pretty rare thing to come across it, just stumble across it. But that's the amazing thing about this, is that they put in so much effort to make it a world. It's the attention to detail. That's what made Skyrim special, right? That's what makes all of these, these games that are so close to gamers so special. And a game like Fallout 4, I think... Uh, exemplifies the idea of when a company kind of gets full of themselves a little bit, looks at a game and just says, well, we'll just kind of follow the same sort of formula that we've done. We'll add in some cool novelty features like building a base. That's a novelty feature. Don't, don't try to convince me that that honestly s saves the game or something. That, that was a novelty feature to be like, oh, look at this thing we also added at E3. It, it was not anything revolutionary or, or truly intriguing. But they kind of were on their high horse. They said, we, we made Skyrim. We made Fallout 3. We are the kings of RPGs. We, we, we're we just ready to go. We, we can do whatever the hell we want. And they released this game without putting in the same time and effort and care that they have put into games like Skyrim and Fallout 3, which made those games truly, truly special. 
And The Witcher 3 perfectly, perfectly personifies that care and attention to detail that is frankly lacking in a lot of modern games. You know, games have never had bigger budgets. They've never had bigger marketing budgets, bigger uh, customer bases to go off of. They've never had more going for them. And yet that depth and care and, and just the attention to detail in those little things, that's never been more lacking. But when we do get it, we get it in the package of a Skyrim or of a Witcher 3, where it just blows you away. And so when I say The Witcher 3 is the greatest game ever made, I'm not, I'm not just saying that. I'm not hopping on some sort of hype train. I'm saying it's the greatest game I've ever played. It's the greatest game I've, I've ever encountered or seen or heard of. I mean, it is unbelievably unique. I can go back there after playing dozens and dozens of hours and still find amazing new little nuances or things that I'm just blown away by. And above all else, you know, when you see an amazing game, you hope that the company that made it is also great because you want to support them in, in creating this piece of content. I mean, The Witcher 3 is a game that I would happily pay $120, $150 to play because I know I'm going to be putting in 500 hours at least, bare minimum. And the great thing is that CD Projekt Red, the developers of The Witcher 3, are so unbelievably focused on ensuring that their customers have a great experience that they released, what was it? It was like 18 pieces of DLC for free. Absolutely for free. All these special little extra quests, sets of hair and, and beard stylings, armor settings, uh, finisher animations, all sorts of different things just thrown in there absolutely for free. And then they release a couple extra DLC packs Blood and Wine, which adds another 20 to 30 hours to your experience. An entirely new area, and that's the actually the gameplay you're seeing right now is, is uh, from Blood and Wine. It's just jaw-dropping. And they did this all for the gamer, for the consumer. It's jaw-droppingly amazing. I know I'm running out of adjectives, guys. <laughs> I'm running out of adjectives to describe how amazing this game is, how it changed the way that gaming just works. It changed it all. And when people say, well, Elder Scrolls Six is going to really blow it away, Th this game, you can blame The Witcher 3. I don't think you should blame it for anything other than being awesome, but you can blame The Witcher 3 for being responsible for The Elder Scrolls Six coming out in four or five years. It's going to take a while for that game to come out. And honestly, they say it's because they want to work on other projects, because they've got other stuff they're focusing on. Really what it is, above all else, I believe it has to do with The Witcher 3. If they were to come out this coming year, 2017 even, with an Elder Scrolls 6, what would they be comparing it to? People would be comparing it to The Witcher 3, not to Skyrim. Skyrim was in 20 freaking 11. That's ancient compared to The Witcher 3, and The Witcher 3 crushes Skyrim. Crushes it. And I know some people will disagree with that, but I don't really care. <laughs> And so, honestly, I believe that they've waited this long, and they're going to be waiting longer, putting out some new IPs, until The Witcher 3 is a distant memory. And hopefully they have some technological things that are going for them that they can uh, put forward and use to kind of beat out The Witcher 3. Uh, which will be very interesting, because when you have a game like The Witcher 3, and then you have a direct competitor such as The Elder Scrolls, they have a lot to overcome in order to outdo The Witcher 3. So imagine how incredible The Elder Scrolls 6 is going to be if they're able to outdo The Witcher 3. I know that rhymed. I'm awesome. Regardless, all of that said, The Witcher 3 has changed the way that I view gaming, that I game. 
that my entire gaming schedule has changed because of this game. I have time set aside for me to go in and play this game. I literally, on my calendar, have two-hour blocks set aside where I, I've got my homework time, I've got class time, I go and I have work, and then I've got rehearsal, and then I have the Witcher time. <laughs> and it's because it never ceases to amaze me. Anyway, thank you for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this little uh, talk gaming episode. If you did, smash that like button. It really helps me out. And leave your thoughts on The Witcher 3, Elder Scrolls 6, Fallout 4, all of those things that we discussed down in the comment section below. Read them all, and I love seeing you guys engaged and in, engaging in a discussion with you. Um, with, but with all that said, thank you for watching, guys. I love each and every one of you more than you could possibly know. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Peace out. I've got something in my front pocket for you. Why don't you reach on in my pocket and see what it is? Then grab onto it, it's just for you. Give a little squeeze and say, how do you do? Something in my front pocket for you. Why don't you reach on in my pocket and see what it is? Then grab onto it, it's just for you. Give a little squeeze and say, how do you do? There's something in my front pocket. There's something in my front pocket. There's something in my front pocket. <laughs>